So, can you believe it? Can you fucking believe it? Frank, my damn ex-boyfriend, the one who left me right after my parents' funeral, after a years-long relationship, without any word, just vanished. That Frank is actually Farank, and he lives in Hexaco, is employed by my aunt and uncle, leads the chocolate production, and Mia obviously likes him, as if that wasn't enough. He had much more to tell me, giving me a different emotion to revel in. This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 50 The One Who Ruined Everything You were part of the Order of the End all this time? Nadek sprang up from her seat, face hot. Frank, or Frank, as it seemed his real name had been all along, leaned as far back in his chair as he could, away from his desk. He held his palms up moving his hands in an effort to calm her down. It didn't help. The gesture had always upset her more. He should have remembered that. But maybe he'd never realized it while they were in a relationship. Please, Nidak, calm down. Let me explain. In the complete history of all humanity, Nidak didn't believe Anyone had ever calmed down because someone told them so. What a silly thing to say. She growled and hit her fist on the desk, leaning forward, speaking through her teeth. I've had a lot of different and extreme emotions these past few weeks, but rage wasn't part of it until now. Until seeing you. Can't believe I worried about you. She threw her arms up, kicked at nothing, walked around a chair and plunked down. Her crossed legs didn't stay still for long. The upper leg kicked up and down enough for her whole body to move. Talk. I'm afraid there's more you won't like. So let me start by staying this. I truly did love you. It wasn't planned. I wanted to leave the order, but that is not as easy. Not easy? You should have just told me. From the moment you gained feelings for me, you should have told me. But you didn't, so why should I believe you loved me? This is nonsense. No, I couldn't, and I shouldn't have. He appeared more calm now as if he'd taken his own absurd advice to calm down. I know it's a lot to take in, but think about it. You can see the preposterousness in what you just said, if you can look beyond your anger. And Jess, I know you're smart enough to do that. Nedak's anger abated, and that in turn almost made it flicker up again. She'd forgot. She'd forgotten this had been something he was able to do. First, he forgot what stirred her anger, telling her to calm down. And then she forgot he always knew to say the right thing after all. She thought back to what she'd said, and had to admit he was right. You see it, don't you? At a curt nod from Nedak, accompanied with a sigh, the corners of his mouth lifted. If I had tried to tell you everything, you wouldn't have believed me because I'd have uncovered your parents as liars. And I know that wouldn't have gone well. At all. Nidak had to acknowledge that with a grunt. Of missed those words. Faring said softly enough for Nidak to think she wasn't meant to have heard. She felt a blush on her cheeks and a resurgence of anger. Aren't you and Melia? She hesitated how to finish the question. Oh, yes. Frank looked embarrassed. We are. I am not sure what it is, 
which he does seem to be infatuated with me. Infatuated? Oh, come on. I've heard the way she talks about you. She's completely besotted. And going on the way you're reacting, I'd say the same about you. That's... Huh. Nina blinked. That should feel awkward, shouldn't it? But it's not. Perhaps because she always spoke to you as Farrink? And I never associated that with you. I'm more distanced from this? Nina felt dismayed at her disappearance of her anger. Where had it gone? She couldn't believe how relaxed she felt around him still, even after all this time and what he'd done. But what had he done? She didn't know any details yet. She only knew he'd been a member of the Order. There had to be more. More things she could be angry about, perhaps. After all the sadness of the past weeks, another emotion felt great. She wanted more of it. There was more you had to tell me, wasn't there? Might as well start from the beginning. Go on. You just want to get angry with me again, don't you? He sighed and immediately barked a laugh. Don't look so surprised, really, Nedak. Did you think I suddenly stopped knowing you? I might not understand the reason why, but I know you do. No need to tell me. You ever is going to anyway, were you? All right, madame. Your wish shall be granted. But please, don't hit me. And please, Please let me finish my story before you start accusing me of being a square-faced gotso. I'll try. Oh, wait. So? We didn't meet by accident. I've been in the order ever since I was deemed old enough. One day, I had the great honor of being called in for a special task. They proposed it to me, but I knew they wouldn't have trusted me to keep my mouth shut. So I accepted. At first, they said I'd go into a world much different from ours. They'd give me about half a year to adjust to the world, and then expect me to befriend someone, preferably get more than friendly. Nidek's teeth ground together as he spoke. Even though she tried to keep a neutral face, she knew her lips pressed together in sync with the tightening of her cheeks. She forced her fists to unball. Keeping her foot from shaking only worked for a couple of seconds. With every word, her anger increased. She reveled in it. Of what Bob world, they merely meant a different area of our world. Farrick continued. Different weren't enough, so our culture to seem like a different world. I was wrong. The man named Klepa transported me into Earth. As I was informed, it was called. At first, I had difficulty believing it to be a different world, but my disbelief didn't last long. It was incredibly hard to adjust to coming from a society without any technology worthy of mentioning. I don't have to tell you what Earth has. Normal hardship in adjusting. He had been looking at a spot at a desk this whole time, but with this he wagered a look up at Nadek. She twitched her lips in a sort of grimace which somehow conveyed agreement. He lowered his eyes again. Half a year certainly wasn't enough to learn everything, and despite my best effort, it was obvious I was out of place. Hence why I said I came from a tiny country village. Thanks to all that technology, I'd been able to find an existing village beforehand to establish my background. Of course, 
as you may have guessed, no. The thing about my parents being dead and having no other family was a lie to avoid you wanting to go and visit. Even then, you still made it difficult at times to convince you I didn't want to return. He grinned slightly. Nidek was not amused. I wanted to visit that village for years. From what the internet told me, it seemed like an interesting place. Like going back in time, twenty years or more. When you disappeared, I almost went looking for you there. I even bought all the tickets and everything I needed for the trip. But in a fit of rage and grief, I cancelled it all. Thinking since you left me, you probably wouldn't want to be found. She blinked her eyes, dispersing the wetness. The day she cancelled it all had been the day she broken down on the street and found Kitty. I am incredibly sorry for all the hurt caused Nerek. I didn't want it. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I didn't realize the woman they wanted me to entice would actually capture my heart. The isolated village was a perfect excuse for my lack of technological, political, social and any other knowledge. And it also worked in favor of my different accent. And if I remember correctly, the accent in turn worked in favor of my task of seducing you. You damned man. You know well enough you remember it correctly. It was one of the things that attracted me to you from the first time we met. I told you that often enough. Damn it. She mumbled the curse under her breath. Farang cleared his throat. Yes, well, lucky me, I suppose. Either way, the reason why they... Just a second, I have a question. How did you know where to find me that day? Oh, well, during the half year of preparation, I would get regular notes sent to me. I do not know how they did it. There was a specific way in my apartment, which the man Klappa said never to move and to leave empty at all times, except with return notes and such, and... I remember that tray. Nedak burst out. It was ugly as hell. I never understood why he just sat there doing nothing. You know I had my doubts about it being some kind of omni ritual from your village. I was right. I'll never forget the time I put my handbag on it. Your reaction was a bit over the top, for sure. Yes. Well, it was important. They could have accidentally transported your handbag away. How was I to explain that? Avery. They'd given me your name before, and ordered me to find you. Lucky for me, your first name is unique. I'd been following you for several weeks when the note arrived, saying the day had come. I knew you'd be at that cafe around that time, so I set the plan in motion. I only followed instructions. You only followed instructions. Nedak said flatly. Despite her anger, she did understand his position. Like he said, he didn't have much choice. Nedak admitted she probably would have done the same. Or perhaps not. It was more likely she'd have tried to run away. It wouldn't have been too difficult for Faring to disappear in some busy city. Why didn't you leave? You could have easily run away. I doubt they would have taken the effort to find you back. Especially seeing how much effort they had to take for finding me back after my parents died, she thought. They had my sister. They mentioned it in a casual way, but it was an obvious wet. She also works for Mistress Wydeck and Master Steetham now, but I'll get to that later. 
This is the hardest part to tell you. You don't know yet why they wanted me to seduce you. It's not pretty. He kept his head pointed down, but looked at her through his eyelashes. I am forever in your debt. This is the most despicable thing I ever did, and never will I lower myself to such a thing again. Just fucking say it already, for Paul's sake. Impatience lay heavy in Nadak's tone of voice. They wanted me to break you and your parents apart. I never understood why, and... Nadak didn't hear the rest. His voice faded as her thoughts took over. He'd succeeded in his task. Her parents hadn't approved of him. They'd had several huge arguments about their relationship, until finally one massive enough to make her move out of the house she grew up in. They were probably close to telling her all about Parallelo and the royalness of the family. They had tried so hard to get in touch with her after that. She was stubborn and never answered her mobile. They eventually regained contact, but spurred on by Frank, it resulted in another heartbreaking fight between Nadek and her parents. A few weeks later, they were dead. You have been listening to Nadek, Chapter 50, The One Who Ruined Everything. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nadek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nadek and Kitty. I've had a lot of different and extreme emotions. She threw her hand for the moment. Nadek's teeth ground together as he. It was incredible. No, my hardship in a nutshell. That wasn't even a word. She twitched her lips in a sort of grimace, when somehow confi- You damned man. You know well enough you remember it correctly. Which the man clapped never to move and to leave empty at all. When the noise had arrived. This is difficult. They'd had several huge arguments about their relationship. They'd had several huge arguments. What the fuck? They were probably close to Catalan. What the fuck? After a 